What's made America great and, and one of the freest countries in history is that our forebearers were deeply concerned with their liberties and with freedom and with uh, family rights and property rights and religious rights. And we are now losing those very, very rapidly and becoming a standard of tyranny uh, worldwide. And some folks that have been fighting for 60 plus years against tyranny is the Skousen family. A lot of them are very prolific uh, and really exposing the, the, the heart of what's going on. Of course, Cleon Skousen wrote the best-selling Naked Communist uh, back in the 50s. And I remember uh, it, it, there were several copies uh, at my uh, father's uh, father's uh, home, uh, farmhouse, ranch. Uh, the whole house is full of books, but there were several copies of that. I remember reading it when I was about 12 and I already read so many history books, it made perfect sense that there are powerful elites that aren't free market. They use communism and socialism and Cloward and Piven, who came out in the 60s, a program to domesticate the population so you have control of them. Uh, so uh, since then, of course, Joel Skousen's written many uh, best-selling books and runs World Affairs Brief. He's his nephew. And the reason I introduced that is they've been fighting this tyranny for a long time. He was a Marine Corps fighter pilot uh, before that. Uh, and, of course, he uh, joins us now. Uh, until about 25 after next hour, then I'll get back into that surveillance news. And then we have a guest joining us in studio with fighting the smart meters uh, that uh, are, are nothing but big brother fraud meters. They also are overcharge folks on record. So we're going to have a um, guest in here who's successfully helping battle that in Austin, Texas, a model for others. But he's the editor at worldaffairsbrief.com. And the reason I wanted to get him on is we made a film about a year ago that's on DVD called... Uh, Strategic Relocation, based on his best-selling book. Uh, he's also uh, probably the top uh, a secure home uh, advisor in the country and the best-seller, uh, the, the Secure Home. We sell all those two books and the, the film at InfoWarsStore.com, but I'm not here to plug that today. I wanted to get him on. He's on the road. We appreciate him joining us on short notice because just watching the news the last week, I'd already thought this, but Rob Jacobson ran in here Friday and goes, uh, 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 look at the CFR. They're saying we're going to have war with China, and that's the new enemy. And the pivot out east, and the submarines off our coast, and the missile test, and all the news. And Jacobson crammed a big stack of media in my hands. I'm going to show viewers, radio listeners, I'll read it out for you. China unveils its secretive nuclear submarine fleet for the first time in four decades. Uh, that's a report out of the Miami news. Here's another one uh, out of. Uh, Como News out of Seattle. Chinese media show Seattle as potential nuclear target. That came out last week. Rand suggests using land-based ACMs against China. Uh, here's another one. Is China prepared to force a showdown with Japan? And, and they're also having a drill, though, of China landing during a civil or, or emergency disasters or uh, other disasters, a uh, natural disaster in Hawaii. So we got that report up on InfoWars.com. Here's the Washington Free Beacon. China deploys new bomber with long-range land attack missile. U.S. is the target. And then we've got all these Council on Foreign Relations put out books. Uh, I'm not going to have time to get into that because I want to get to our guest, where they basically say prepare for that. And this is while selling us out to China to a great extent. Now... Joel Skousen joins us, and Joel, I want to give you the floor in the rest of this segment to try to geopolitically, because you really have been the first and main person for a decade or longer, saying this will be what developed, um, and explaining the three power blocks to people. In the next five, six minutes before we go to break, act like we've got new listeners, which we do every five seconds, who don't understand this, and, and explain to them the three power blocks and what we're facing, and it really scares me that everything you say continues to come out just exactly as you've said it. So tell us what's currently happening and then stare into that political crystal ball and tell us tell us what's coming. Well, thanks, Alex. It's good to be with you again. Uh, as I've written in several of my publications and talked about in the World Affairs Brief, there are three major predator or power centers uh, in the world, and they are the Anglo-American globalists, which we have to deal with, directly there are the russians and the chinese and each of these are separate predator centers each one setting themselves up someday to control their own version of the new world order and uh, uh, the russians and chinese are in temporary alliance uh, planning on taking down the west they've been preparing for decades for this and the west has been keeping ahead of them in terms of weapons technology 
and in fact giving technology, second level technology to the Russians and, and Chinese in order to uh, help get them to the point where they are uh, confident enough to take on the West. And you might ask, why would the West, for your new readers, why would the West want to be suicidal enough to want the Russians and Chinese to attack us? Well, as Cleon explained in The Naked Communist, they've used the West or the Communists, and they brought communism to power, they brought the Russians to power, they gave them the first nuclear bomb materials, they all set off the first nuclear bomb a year after Hiroshima, they brought the Chinese to power through cutting off arms to Chiang Kai-shek, all for the preliminary purpose of breaking down other governments so they didn't get blamed for it, let the communists break them down, the globalists come in and have an excuse then to remove communists and, and replace them with globalists. But ultimately, they're going to allow the Russians and Chinese to do a preemptive nuclear strike on America. That's why the United States issued PDD-60, Presidential Decision Directive 60, in 1997 under President Bill Clinton, basically telling our nuclear forces don't depend on launch on warning. In other words, be prepared to launch a retaliatory strike after you've absorbed a first strike from an enemy. And of course, General Butch Neal at the time, Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, said, retaliate with what? Once you've absorbed a nuclear first strike, you haven't got much left to retaliate with. But my overall general theory, which I'm presenting now before I go into what's really happening with what you said, is that the globalists want this strike so they can come out of their bunkers, claim innocence that the Russians and Chinese have deceived us or deceived them, that they didn't know about this strike coming, and that because our military has been decapitated in that strike, that they'll now be able to goad us into accepting a militarized new world order to prosecute World War III. Okay, Joel, then... Joel, uh, again, we, you joined us on short notice. You're, you're working on a business trip via Skype uh, on an internal mic on your computer. It, it's pretty audible, but this is so important. I want to get you on a landline or a cell phone during this break. We're going to break. We're going to get you back on to recap that and then talk about where you see this going in the future. So we're going to call him back right now via cell. Thank you, Joel. Joel right. Scalzo. We're going to keep you on Skype uh, for visuals uh, for the uh, viewers out there as well. Uh, but again, we have him on via short notice. Uh, very, very important information. And I hope you're all listening and understanding that their private interest that uh, and the Communist Party in the case of China, private interest, corporate interest in the case of Russia, but but really private mega banking interest in control of the U.S. predator states who are preparing a underground government, a hardened government, a, a COG continuity of government, shadow government, and then using the nuclear attack they're pushing for as a way to wipe out our old republic fully. They'll also use a civil war between patriots and uh, and the police and military. They want us to fight each other. Uh, that's also one of their plans. We did not let that happen. Uh, so that they can then have the Republic rise again as a fascist uh, system. And I'm going to have Joel walk through all of that, but it's it's really heating up and accelerating towards this. He thinks it's five, ten years out. My only issue is this: if this keeps pushing, uh, it could happen earlier. Or, or, or if, if this is known, uh, just like they tricked the Japanese to attack, that's on record and declassified, will they trick the Chinese to attack this time? And uh, but everything you see in the elites is, 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 is digging in and getting underground. So Joel Scalzo will be with us about 25 minutes into the next hour. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system. But check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water model and the RAD Eliminator Pro Filtered Sports Bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go bag favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest Shower Filter System, and the Aquapod Kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter.
Waterfront with Joel Skousen into the uh, next hour. I want to get into Obamacare, how things are going for the globalists, but 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 uh, getting back, sir, just just briefly recapping for folks that just joined us, the three power blocks, what's happening with China, and then the time frame of this, and 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 then make sense of all the DHS gearing up, the preparation for the war with Patriots. Uh, obviously, they're trying to start some type of conflict between the groups. Is that another one of their plans, or is that to preposition the idea that after the collapse? Uh, the enemy will be mopping up the liberty movement. I mean, I just see preparation for war with real Americans and then preparation for war with the Chinese doing everything they can to let them encircle us, but also mess with them into attacking us. Yeah, it's a complex scenario, uh, Alex. Uh, you know, it's, there's several different levels to analyze it. As I, if I could just briefly recap here, first of all, since 1900, the Western globalists have been attempting to build the two major enemies that will attack us someday, and that is Russia and China. They brought them to power. They created them. That doesn't mean that they control them, however. They've actually created independent enemies, and there's no shortage of them around the world. And, you know, Satan is involved in inspiring evil men to rise up. A lot of people say, why can't we have peace in the world? The reason we don't have peace is because there is systematic evil in the world that will always continue to rise up. But we are having to deal with systematic evil within our own government, what I call the dark side of government. It has built Russia and China to basically tear down the fabric of the West and other liberty countries around the world, letting the globalists come in with an alternative solution to save them from communists, but ultimately not destroying communism, reserving for them the last final attack upon America, which I think is coming in, in uh, probably eight years at the earliest, maybe 10 years, uh, but clearly into the next decade because Russia and China aren't ready to attack the West. The entire political theater about China wouldn't dare attack us because we're their lifeblood of commerce isn't true at all. China, in fact, intends to take over the West, run its own new world order, impose its dictates upon us and actually own the markets, not be hostage to the Western markets, but own the markets. In order to do that, they have to take out U.S. military power. But one of the interesting things they intend to do is not attack civilian cities. And this runs counter to what has been revealed or allowed to be leaked by the official China news agency about the attack plans on America showing attacking major cities in the east and seeing that fallout rise into the west uh, into, into the east but really that's for blackmail purposes uh, alex in other words uh, the threat of attacking city has been used for blackmail to scare them into compliance or to you know, there's, a, there's a variety of purposes prior to war but i happen to know that the chinese and russian military plans do not call for attacking civilian population centers, but only military centers. And then saying to the West, now, if you want the rest of it, you know, then I suggest that you, or you need to, uh, to succumb to our level of control. In other words, they want to blackmail the West into submission. Well, the West knows about these plans. They know that there'll be a military decapitating strike on, the, on America someday. And, but they intend to to deceive the Russians and Chinese thinking, uh, who think, you know, we can blackmail us into submission by not submitting to that blackmail. They'll, in fact, pull out an entire uh, group of uh, secret weapons that they've been building and prosecute the war, but they won't do it in the name of the United States. They'll do it in the name of this new militarized globalist government that they'll talk us into the necessity of in terms of prosecuting this war. So it's important to be able to understand what's going on. Another thing that I want to point out is that the United States is focusing on China as the threat. It's very interesting that they completely negate the Russian threat, which is even greater than the Chinese threat in terms of the missile throw capability. What I think China and Russia are cooking up in this next war is that China's going to, or Russia's going to take the lead in the nuclear attack on America. They've got the most sophisticated weapons. They've got maneuvering warheads now, at least they claim that they do. They're building... And China's going to be supply. Pardon me? Will China be supply? Is it 
Well, not just supply, but China is going to take up the entire Far East. They're going to capture in a grudge match everything from Japan down through Australia. And they're going to supposedly be the back door. But essentially, they're going to husband their missiles or keep their missiles in reserve because they basically want to take Russia down in a betrayal in World War III. And so Russia's going to use up most of their weapons in the first strike on America, depending on China to back them up if more are necessary. But I think China is going to betray Russia in this war, join forces with the West to attack Russia's rear. Russia will be eliminated as one of the three predator powers. And then it's going to be the globalists in the West against China as the new Cold War enemy. Now, that's a very important strategy that even the globalists want. Because if China's a new hegemonic threat and highly militarized after World War III, the globalists have the excuse now to keep the world military in power and not let sovereignty go back to individual nations that they did during World War II. And that's where I think we're going to lose our freedom. You talked about what all this preparation is towards martial law and through ammunition and all of the total surveillance system. I think, frankly, that it doesn't come into being or into practice, even though they're preparing for it, they're militarizing the police, they're practically giving away armored vehicles around the nation and making sure that you hire people both in the military and in civilian police that, that will be able to take on America, don't have any compunction against taking on American citizens. But that militarization, I think, will only go into full force once this war comes when they'll have the excuse to implement martial law. Nobody will raise a finger of opposition because we're in a war scenario. I think what we'll see as part of the New World Order is an oath of allegiance to the New World Order. And our government will come out and say there are people in the United States who follow Joel Scowls and Alex Jones and other people like that who are believe that we knew about this war, that we didn't protect America, that we caused 9-11. Those people aren't supporting our troops. They're undermining our war effort. We need to lock them up and to ferret them out. We're going to have an oath of allegiance. No one will have any citizenship in this nation and in this world government unless they take the oath of allegiance. And they'll ask Americans to point the finger at those that believe in conspiracy. And I think that's when the camps will be implemented. I think that's when martial law and that's when gun confiscation will go forth. Uh, Let me ask you a quick question. Uh, Joel Skousen is our guest. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. His site's worldaffairsbrief.com. Our site's infowars.com. Joel, let me ask you this point. Um, everything I see is, 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 is racing towards demonization of the founders, gun owners, everything the persecution of the press it's intensifying but but what adds a lot of validity and i'm trying to pull the articles up right now i forgot to do it before the show it was in the mid 60s and again in the 70s because i know the british declassified it last year but i had seen this on pbs when i was like a kid it had come out uh, that that twice the russians came to the u.s and said let's make a pact let's nuke china together and that the u.s uh, each time said, no, we're not going to nuke China with you. Then that was part of the next deal when Nixon went to Russia. I know you were a Marine Corps officer and also have a lot of inside connections, but you've also researched the history. Is there truth to those supposed British declassifications? No, I don't think so, Alex. Uh, there was never any pact between uh, the Russians and the Chinese, I mean, the Russians and the Americans to go after the Chinese. The Chinese wouldn't even have counted as that because they were busy trying to give everything they could to China. That's what happened during the Vietnam War. The true secret sure. pact at Paris was to, in fact, uh, replace China at the U.N. Security Council from Taiwan. So why did the British put out stuff like that? Well, as I say, we have to be careful. There's an awful lot of disinformation that floats around. Uh, I just have never found any confirmation that that, that deal was made, or frankly. Uh, I would like to see the material when you come out uh, with it. Uh, it sure, I'm just going from memory reading about it. I, I, I think it was a London Telegraph last time I saw it. It's just a side issue. I remember uh, reading about it previously. Joel Skousen's our guest. Second hour is coming up. Renowned author and expert Joel Skousen breaks down the globalist plan to shut down America and stage a new world war. In one day, America will go from day to night 
And if you haven't prepared in advance, there's not enough time to prepare in 24 hours, even if you saw it that early. Coming to the Info War in November is our new documentary film presentation. Strategic relocation is a systematic way to think strategically in the future about how do I safeguard. Joel Skousen, Strategic Relocation. The freeways are going to be crowded, they're going to run out of gasoline, they're going to run out of food, and then they're going to start to go north and south of those freeways. Joel Skousen is renowned as one of the world's foremost experts in strategic relocation and the securing of your home. We talk about natural disasters. The health environment, we talk about pollution, the water quality. My personal experience about being in every one of these states. Government is digging in for the organized, incremental collapse of society and world war. The U.S. isn't building huge underground bases and bunkers because of some terrorist threat. They know that a massive nuclear attack is coming. They want that attack to come. Most people won't even be ready and won't be able to get out of town when any of these nuclear weapons fall because there'll be absolute panic. There is no preparedness without strategy. What I tell people uh, is that you do have time. Prepare wisely in advance. This Christmas, give the gift of preparedness. Strategic Relocation, the film, with Joel Skousen and Alex Jones. It says, U.S. considered 64 bombing to keep China nuclear free, approached the Soviet Union to get a deal, and the Soviets weren't interested. And that was from McGeorge Bundy. So that's in memos declassified. That's in 1998. The Brits, and I'm going from memory off this last year, they said the opposite. And I know I read that. But, but yeah, it just sounds like pure bull because, as the John Birch Society and others exposed back in the uh, 60s, it wasn't just the Russians arming uh, the, the uh, Chinese, and they were arming the uh, North uh, Vietnam. Joel, well, there's a lot of evidence that a lot of U.S. companies, Arm & Hammer and others, they were busy also helping the Russians so they could help China and then help Vietnam, correct? Absolutely, uh, uh, Alex. They were in there. Uh, and then, and of course, recently, in the past decade, they've used Israel as the main conduit to arm China. Uh, most of our technology that goes to Israel is being allowed to be sold by Israel to China, both as a backdoor way to get more wealth into China and to transfer technology to China so that the U.S. Uh, can't be uh, blamed for it. But we're behind it, and uh, it's happening. And we've given them Boeing, so now they're coming out with, with, with stuff that looks better than our B-52. We've got planes from the 50s, and they've got brand new stuff. I mean, this really is scary. Well, it is. Uh, China is actually probably going to outproduce Russia in terms of conventional arms in preparation for World War III. That's what makes me believe that Russia is going to be the primary missile attack force. Uh, they've still got a lot of 80s and 90s technology conventional weapons, but a lot of their conventional weapons are in disrepair, uh, don't have enough submarines or blue water navy uh, even compared to China now, which was outproducing anyone in the world in terms of naval power. It, it, within 10 years, it's going to be a formidable naval power. And a lot of people ask me, well, if they're going to use nuclear weapons to take out our carrier task groups, why are they building our aircraft carriers? And my answer is they intend to take out our task force and our U.S. Unfortunately, is going to allow those task force to be decapitated. And that's when China will bring out their aircraft carriers into kind of a nuclear-free zone where they'll be free to maneuver then in the aftermath of the nuclear first strike. And again, the top, oh, this is what I wanted to ask you about. When we come back, this is a short segment. The, the, the purge that's going on is definitely going on. Uh, the litmus test, lower levels, will you take guns? But higher level, it's will you, you know, put women in frontline combat and have, you know, just all this stuff to wreck the military. I mean, it's just there's no other thing that I can say coming out of all this that they do want to wreck the military, make us look weak, and then elicit this attack, as you've said. Well, they certainly have put a lot of yes men at the top. I mean, uh, the whole story about the Chinese being invited in to take part in this exercise in Hawaii is just treasonous. 
It is a military exercise. They're being allowed on our military uh, destroyers, in our submarines. And even though these are general officers doing the tours, they've got eyes wide open trying to figure out everything they can uh, from what we're, uh, we're doing in our military. And they learn a lot from military communications and protocols during these drills. So even though <clears throat> there are elements within the military who are very patriotic and who, in fact, do see China and Russia as the threat and are trying their best to prepare against that, the yes men at the very top are globalists. They get that kind of indoctrination at the <clears throat> Naval and Army War Colleges. Uh, through globalists from Rand Corporation and Georgetown University that are professors at these things. And they come out, and their whole purpose after they put out their yearly report about Chinese military threat is to say, now the answer to this, of course, to have more military exercise with China, to show them that we're a friend, that we bend over backwards, just to continue to seek to disarm. Give them more ports, the uh, more everything. We've got to go to break, uh, Joel. We've got to go to break. We're going to come right back in one minute and continue where you left off and talk about some of these uh, secret uh, weapons uh, that they've uh, got as well. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> My judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infoworth.com. <laughs> and Joel Skousen is our guest. He is the editor and heads up worldaffairsbrief.com. Uh, he, we made a presentation film that's available on DVD at Infowarsstore.com called Strategic Relocation. And it gets into the entire world, the safest country, sub-regions, unlike any other research out there. Other top researchers and survivalists like James Wesley Rawls and others have said this really is a powerful film and powerful book of his that, that's based on that we also sell. This is essential reading, essential viewing, both of them available, well, exclusively with the film. I produced it at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling toll-free 888 Two five three three one three nine, and and I, I clearly clearly what Joel Skousen says is right. All the evidence is overwhelming when you immerse yourself in it. This is their main plan. Doesn't mean they don't have sub plans and alternate plans, but they're doing everything they can. Here's the Panama Canal. Here's all our missile secrets. Here's our bomber secrets. Here, come have a drill, a disaster drill in our secret facilities in in Hawaii while the communist Chinese train to take down America and tell Hollywood they can't have any movies critical of communist China or their leaders. I mean, I mean, they literally have their fingers in everything, manipulating internally our politics, and the globalists are just on the surface selling out. So, Joel, I knew a lot of people that worked in the Star Wars program, like physicist Dr. Bob Bowman and former uh, fighter bomber pilot like yourself, uh, himself in Vietnam, and he said, look, I can only tell you what they've accidentally leaked here and there. But he goes, when I was in the secret space-based weapons program, they had these uh, projectiles, meteor guns that fire DU Sabos that can kill people, you know, a mile under the ground, a, a decapitation weapon, uh, drones, robotic systems. I mean, he said it was, he said it was massive in the late 70s, early 80s before he left. And obviously, there's been a lot of stuff going on. It's huge. As you've documented, our government spent more on underground bases and COG than all the other governments combined. So when you talk about how they want to elicit this attack to then have NATO, the U.S., and Britain really bring in this total hyper-fascist, whatever you want to call it, New World Order takeover by, by tricking Russia and China into this strike, uh, I mean, you're talking about it, I'm talking about it. How will they get away with it? And from your sources... Uh, and, of course, a lot of this is leaked now, the black manna, all this stuff, uh, different space planes they've got. What are the secret weapons uh, that they intend to, after we take the first strike, roll out against them? Well, the primary secret weapons is, as you alluded to, is Star Wars space-based anti-missile systems are already deployed and operational. Now, they will not use these to defend America, which they could do so, but they won't. I think PDD-60 is very, very clear that they're going to uh, take in a first strike from the Russians and Chinese to decapitate our military. That's why I don't recommend 
even as a patriotic former military officer, that anybody be in the military in the future. If not defending America, you're working unknowingly, you know, under a globalist agenda. That's what all of the foreign wars are, to produce the image of the bully of the world, which we're quickly gaining, the ugly American again, which will help justify Russian Chinese attacking. But the important thing to remember is that we will not defend America. Now, you know, when I talk to people in the Air Force and the Missiles Command, uh, Strategic Command, they say, yeah, we still practice for uh, launch on warning that we'll defend against a uh, nuclear first strike. Let me explain to your audience, the new people, what launch on warning is all about. We have fixed missile systems here on Earth. You don't dis if you discount, you know, what I'm talking to you about the space-based weapons. We have fixed missile systems. We have no mobile missiles. The Russians and the Chinese have every one of those missile silos targeted. They have big, strong concrete doors, but they cannot take a direct hit from a nuclear weapon. They'll be taken out. So launch on warning means that when we detect that their missiles launching, we get our missiles out of our silos already. And, and so that when their incoming missiles, which can't change course, hit those silos, they're already empty. Now, if you wait until you absorb a nuclear first strike, those missiles are all gone. But in launch on warning, the one who launches second actually does the most damage because they're retargeted as they're going up into the air and they hit launch sites that have not been used yet and they go after Russian and Chinese sites and targets that are still active, whereas their missiles, the first strike missiles, come into empty targets. Now, that's talking about missile silos. The missiles that they send to our military bases will have devastating impact. But I believe what's going to happen is that our military missile forces will not get the launch codes from the White House. You know, it takes a special codes from the White House to be able to activate the codes that are had at Cheyenne Mountain and other places in the missile bases. And I just don't think they're going to get them. They're going to say, hey, come on, the missiles are coming in. Where are the codes? Technical communications can't get them to you. We're working on it, and we'll absorb a nuclear first strike. And it's going to be treasonous. It's going to be evil. But our government is going to come out of their bunkers, deep underground bunkers. You know they're not building those bunkers because of terrorist attacks. They're building those bunkers because they know a nuclear first strike is coming to America, and they intend to survive it. That's part of my motivation. So that's what the Homeland Security cover is. It's not even with the fight with the Patriots. That's just the political cover. It's op If you look at the intel, it's openly a hardening to, to shelter in place, uh, during the nuclear war and then reemerge with the high-tech weapon systems, which is the RAND Corporation plan. That's right. And I think from that point on, when they come out of their bunkers and they decide to fight this war, and everybody says, with what? In the first place, those space-based weapons are going to keep any other missiles from coming in. So we will be able to start rebuilding and reorganizing military forces. I think the Russians and Chinese, after the first strike, are going to try to blackmail the West into submission. Our leaders will come out of their bunkers and say, don't give in to this, let's fight. And that's when they'll start to bring out these highly weaponized systems that they could have used to defend us. And it's a perfect plan because after we've seen 50 million people killed, most of the military wiped out, the carriers destroyed, it won't matter. People will be howling for murder and, 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 and it will be, it, then World War III really gets going then because now it's, right. it, it's going to be on. And anybody That's that criticizes right. that will be hung immediately. I mean, it'll be a death sentence to try to say, we've just been nuked. Hey, this is all a setup. Don't do it. You know, we predicted it. No, it'll be you've got to get behind the new world order now. You've got to swear allegiance to Europe and Britain who are going to aid us with the UN. They're all going to stand with us now against the dirty commies. And that's why politically, Alex, it's so important that they co-opt the American Republican Party and the ostensible conservatives. And that's what they're doing. They're setting up what we saw last week with the with the sabotage of the Cuccinelli campaign in Virginia and the promotion of Chris Christie. I mean, every major political entity was out there cheering for Chris Christie, saying, take your roadshow on the road, go for the presidency, Time Magazine, CNN. All of the controls. Oh, media stay there, sir. I want you to come back and give us the current. Absolutely. The yeah, absolutely. Stay there. Right now, every channel, we've got all the news channels on. They're just worshiping him right now. The elephant in the room, as he's called. Absolutely. So they've got to knock out the real Tea Party.
That's their enemy, so they can carry out this plan, but we're exposing it. This could not be a more important broadcast. Joel Scalz is our guest. Stay with us. Why is nascent iodine so important? Nascent iodine is so important because it goes directly to the thyroid. It's not bonded to a salt, which means it doesn't have to be broken down. And it's the most usable form. It's what the body uses. It's what the body is designed to use. If you have low energy levels, if you have pains, if you have thyroid problems, if you don't feel up to par, well, they've proven now that the fluoride and a lack of iodine causes a decreased IQ because you have all this stuff that builds up inside your system and builds up and builds up. And that's why some people, when they start taking iodine, will have what's called a Hertzheimer reaction or a detoxification reaction. But that's a good sign. That means you're detoxifying all that fluoride buildup, the mercury buildup in there, the bromine buildup in your system, and the chlorine buildup in your system. You don't want those things. All of those things have been proven as carcinogens. That's one of the reasons prostate cancer is on the rise, too, is because prostate takes up iodine and the men that are lacking iodine causes the prostate to become cystic and causes the prostate to swell and eventually leads to prostate cancer. There's been an extreme rise in polycystic ovarian disease, PCOS with women, fibrocystic breast disease because iodine is stored in the breast tissue, the ovaries, the prostate glands in men. It's utilized by every single cell in the body. Mm, why does this almost taste good compared to other iodine that tastes horrible? That's because it's real iodine atomic form. We wanted something that's going to go straight into the bloodstream and straight into the thyroid gland. We wanted to put it in a vegetable glycerin base. That's a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base. And that product is not tested on animals. It's vegan friendly. It's gluten free. It's GMO free. Of all the things I've done, nascent iodine was just absolutely amazing. So we developed with Dr. Group a double strength, low price. InfoWars Life. Dot com survival shield the atomic nascent iodine available right now yeah i'm waiting as i watch our entire bill of rights and constitution dismantled but joel scowls and the more i learn is just so on target about his entire breakdown of this and there's all this surface stuff going on and then even deeper tides and currents but at the bottom of this the globalists have always understood that they have to create giant wars to bring in their world government to carry out their eugenics policies and to reduce population. And by accepting the strike, they will kill American culture forever. The police state will be waiting in the wings. It will roll in. I just wonder, Joel Skousen, and I want to talk about how they want to destroy the libertarian movement, the patriot movement, the constitutional movement uh, in the Republican Party. But, but, but you can see the preparations for this, and then it leaks from Biden. It leaks from the Republican leadership, Karl Rove, all of them, uh, people like uh, Senator McCain. The number one mission with Democrats and Republicans meeting in councils is destroy Rand Paul, destroy Ted Cruz, destroy the Liberty Movement, destroy the John Birch Society type folks that have been right for 60 years, and people like your uncle, Cleon Skousen, God bless him, who's been proven absolutely right. Destroy those of us that are real patriots who want to have a free country into the future and 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 who literally, you know, we're carrying the torch for those that, that created this nation, 1776, that is anathema to this world government plan. We want a system of liberty worldwide. They want the devilish counterfeit of tyranny worldwide using the seeds of our republic to do it. And you see them pushing the anti-gun traitor, Chris Christie, pushing uh, but but doing everything they can with fake scandals to decapitate the liberty movement. So talk about that and talk about where we are in this fight. Because if they're so scared of the real Tea Party and demonizing myself with incredible, unprecedented demonization, demonizing you and others, it shows, as the old fighter bombers know, you're over the target when you're getting the flack. Well, the worst thing that they fear is another Ron Paul surfacing. That's why they fear Ted Cruz, Mike Lee, and uh, Cuccinelli, who uh, just uh, lit a fire under people for real change. Nobody gives us real change from the establishment Republican wing. It's always uh, Obama A and B team. But they fear another Ron Paul. Ron Paul doubled the size of the liberty movement single-handedly because he was able to uh, maneuver, uh, you know, by uh, appealing to both, you know, 
principled liberals, independents, libertarians, conservatives, uh, Christians. He was able to pull in all of them, and they're really afraid. that The Tea Party generally is relatively uneducated. It runs all over the map from semi-conservative uh, to even mainstream conservatives who, you know, like some of the issues of the Tea Party, but they're afraid of the education that if someone like Ron Paul is capable to bring in, they're afraid of what Alex Jones has done in building a million, multi-million uh, base of people who really understand conspiracy. Now, Ron Paul wouldn't touch conspiracy because he felt like it would destroy him politically. But what he did was prepare the way so that people would listen to you, people would listen to me who aren't afraid to talk about the conspiracy issues in a credible way. And so that's why they have to go out and destroy anybody who's on that dividing line between mainstream Republicans and is capable of pulling them over into the real understanding of conspiracy and the constitutionalism, which must, must save us. And, and Rand Paul was is semi in that that juncture that can bring people one way or the other. So is Ted Cruz, so is Mike Lee, and so is Cuccinelli. Now, what they wanted to do was do the Mitt Romney thing on it. You know, Mitt Romney wasn't one of us. And Mitt Romney, by the way, a week ago today, came out and all but endorsed Chris Christie. So hungry is he to get back into the establishment. They won't let him run for president anymore, but he's hungry to get a, a, a cabinet position under someone like Chris Christie. And so he came out and, and supported him. But even someone like Mitt Romney wasn't an insider, but was bending over backwards to please them. They didn't want, because you can't have anybody in the presidency who isn't part of the corrupt system. They might see something. Even if Mitt Romney were in there, had they elected, he would not probably have gone along with a stand down or in Benghazi. They would have had to control him like they did Ronald Reagan with an assassination attempt. So they want puppets. And I'll tell you that Chris Christie is somebody who's locked into their system. He is a globalist pretending to be a conservative. But and it looks like they're going to promote him for president in 2016, probably throw a Marco Rubio or Jeb Bush as a vice president. But this is going to be very, very dangerous. They are breeding the conservatives to basically be knee-jerk, patriotic, pro-war, pro-military, support our troop conservatives. And that's why the, the neocon movement was so important to the establishment. That is to take liberals and have them turn into conservatives ostensibly at least in terms of foreign policy, even though they still maintain their liberal uh, views. Sure, Trotskyites, that's, that's beyond liberal, yeah. Yes, they were Trotskyites, and they have paraded themselves as conservative. I saw uh, Ollie North on television, on Fox television, you know, talking about his great patriots. I mean, Ollie North is on the dark side. Yeah, he's on the conservative dark side, but still the dark side. He is defending government warmongering and always will. He was defending NSA spying. And nobody on the right side of this world defends this kind of Orwellian. Uh, sure, Joel, we're out of time. Let me ask you this. And anytime you want to come to Austin, we'd love to have you in studio. There's so much to talk about. In closing, though, I, I mean, we are starting to gain some ground. We do have a chance. People are really listening. Even people in the power structure are now looking at their children, realizing this new world order is a very dark place to go. And it's time for everybody to realize what you're hearing is the truth. You better choose the right side because going down this road is hellish. Uh, final comments. Well, final comment is you're right, Alex. Our side is gaining strength. Their side is also gaining strength. The two sides are polarizing and hardening. There's hardly any movement, even with all the death and destruction and gun control. There's no movement between the pro-gun side and the anti-gun side. And that means war is the only thing that they're going to be able to throw at us to change American society. They're not going to be able to do it the slow way as they have been doing it through these propaganda techniques. That's right. Hitler was evil. The Japanese imperial system was evil. But our government helped build up both groups along with the British uh, model so that they could use World War II to bring in big government, finally get Americans to accept it. Look what they did to our culture after World War II. Well, imagine another big one like that. They'll be able to do anything they want. And liberty will die in this next war, and they won't give it back as they did in World War II. So don't expect it to turn out the same. All right, Joel Skousen, WorldAffairsBrief.com. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Alex. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free.
Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show.